So let's continue our discussion on game theory. In this video, we will analyze sequential games using the extensive form. The extensive form of the game is a tree diagram in which each strategic decision is shown as a branch form. So this is to show the butterfly effect of the game. In this example or diagram, notice that the leftmost node is with the number 1. This means it is player 1's turn to make the decision. After making decision, it is player 2's turn to make his or her decision. Now notice that in the last part of the tree, there are ordered pairs. This is to show the payoff values for player 1 and player 2. The first coordinate is a payoff for player 1, while the second coordinate is a payoff of player 2. So for example, if player 1 chooses to confess, and player 2 chooses don't confess, the result is 125. This means player 1 gets 1, while player 2 gets 25. Now let's have an example transforming a word problem into its extensive form. Let's read our problem. An incumbent local government official runs against a challenger. They are contemplating on which position to take regarding an issue of importance. The incumbent chooses first. If both choose the same position, the incumbent wins. Otherwise, the challenger wins. Assume that the payoff for winning is 10 and payoff of losing is 0. If a candidate chooses a position not consistent with the party platform, that candidate will have a penalty of negative 5. Draw the extensive form of this game. Now before we draw the extensive form of this game, let's underscore some important information in this game. Notice that the players are the incumbent and the challenger. And their decisions are positions to take regarding an issue. They can choose to either go with the party or to go against the party. It is the incumbent who will make the decision first. If the incumbent and the challenger choose the same position, it is the incumbent who wins. If the incumbent and the challenger has had different decisions, then the challenger wins. The payoff of winning is 10, the payoff of losing is 0. However, if a candidate chooses against a party, he or she will have a penalty of minus 5. So now that we have underscored the important information of this word problem, we can now draw the extensive form. So to summarize, if a candidate wins and choose a position consistent with the party, then winning is 10 points and there's no penalty. If a candidate wins but chose a position against the party, notice that the payoff of winning is 10, but because the candidate went against the party, he or she will have a deduction of 5 points. So the total payoff is just 5. If a candidate loses and choose a position consistent with the party, then the payoff is 0 and there's no penalty. But if a candidate loses and went against the party, then the payoff is negative 5. So in this case, for our extensive form, it is the incumbent who will decide first. The incumbent can choose to either go with the party or to go against the party. So let's use P for go with the party and N for go against the party. Now, after making the decision, it is the player, uh, the challenger who will make the decision. If the challenger chooses to go with the party, then it is the incumbent who will win because they have the same positions. So the payoff of winning is 10, the payoff of losing is 0. 
Now, because they went with the party, there is no deduction or penalty. Now, what about if the challenger chooses to go against the party? In that case, the challenger gets 5 while the incumbent gets 0. Now, for the other arm of the tree, if the challenger chooses to go with the party, then the, the challenger gets 10 points while the incumbent gets negative 5. The reason for this is the, uh, the incumbent loses and he went against the party, so it has a deduction of 5 points. And then finally, if the challenger went against the party, then the incumbent gets 5 points while the challenger gets negative 5. So this completes the extensive form of the game. Now, how do we analyze the sequential game using the extensive form? To analyze the sequential game using the extensive form, we make the analysis starting from the bottom part of the tree or the rightmost part of the tree. In other words, we take a look at the subgames of the extensive form. So to demonstrate this in an example, let's take a look at this diagram. So since our diagram is oriented horizontally, we look at the subgames of uh, this diagram. So the subgames are here, here, and the whole thing. Now, notice that in this subgame, it is player 2 who makes the decision. In this case, player 2 either gets negative 400 or 0. Of course, if you are player 2, you would rather choose don't invest because investing will give negative 400 as compared to getting zero if you choose to not invest. So that means player two will not choose to invest. So we can erase this portion of the tree. Similarly, in this subgame, player two would choose to invest because investing gives a payoff of 200, while not investing only gives zero. So in this case, this arm will be erased in the tree. Now after analyzing these two subgames, we look at the next bigger subgame, which is the whole thing in this case. So because these portions are erased, the remaining portions are the ones in the middle. If you are player 1, choosing invest will give 400, while choosing not invest will give 200. So if you are player 1, you would rather choose to invest. So that's how we analyze sequential games, and that method is called backward induction. Let's take a look at another example. Oh, this is the same example. So, let's take a look at this subgame. Uh, so, it is player 2 who makes the decision. So, in this subgame, player 2 will either invest or not invest. But player 2, as a thinking being, would rather to choose don't invest. So that means this arm of the tree will be erased. Now, similarly, in this subgame, a okay, player two would rather choose to invest than not invest. So this means that this portion of the tree will be erased. Now, after analyzing the subgames, we look at the next bigger subgame. So in this case, the next bigger subgame is, in fact, the whole diagram. If player 1 chooses to invest, the, uh, the payoff is 400, 
while if player 1 chooses not invest, the payoff is 200. So if you are player 1, you would choose don't invest. Uh, you would choose to invest. So. so that means this arm of the tree will be erased. So in this case, the solution of the game is player 1 chooses to invest while player 2 chooses to don't invest. So this ends the dis discussion on game theory, analyzing sequential games using backward induction. Okay, you can try your understanding of the backward induction on this diagram. You may pause the video if you need more time to compute for the solution of this game. So this is quite a big, um, a big extensive form, and the players are A and B. The decisions are, uh, uh, strategies are A1, A2, B1, B2, B3, B4, etc., etc. So if you are done computing the solution to this game, please comment below for your answers. So this ends the lesson on game theory. If you have questions, please comment below. Thank you.